Dojo of Fatigniku has imagination, talent, and ambition. Using rails and belts from old scanners, the case of a discarded desktop computer, and even bits of a hard drive, he has created what's believed to be the first 3D printer made from e-waste. It's taken him several months to put together his experimental device. Lifting designs off a computer, the 3D printer produces physical objects, like this one, which will be a simple plastic container once it's finished. And it doesn't stop there. The 33-year-old says he believes this model is only the prototype for something much larger. He wants to send e-waste to Mars to create homes for mankind. Mon rêve. My dream is to give young people hope and to show that Africa too has its place on the global market when it comes to technology. We're able to create things. Why is Africa always lagging behind when it comes to technology? The young inventor often comes to this scrapyard in Lomé to find the parts he's looking for. Some elements had to be bought new, but in all, his printer cost him $100 to build. I come here very often to look for central units and scanners. I also pick up engines and straps, which I use to build my 3D printer. He says his printer can also be useful on a daily basis, as it can print various utensils needed in any household that are not always easy to get hold of. Though some people have called him a dreamer, his hard work has paid off as the young inventor has been rewarded with the NASA International Space Apps Challenge in Paris. In this school in the Nigerian capital Lagos, students are enjoying a whole new learning experience as they try to master local languages. Globalization means children are being encouraged to learn internationally spoken languages to the detriment of local dialects. So this young software developer has come up with a new application to help promote traditional language and culture. It comes with complete animation, voice and a virtual classroom designed to appeal to children. He says he's on a mission to introduce the app to schools and parents, a strategy he hopes will help maintain Nigeria's linguistic heritage. He says his focus is on culture. Children today are not that interested in learning about culture, and they know little or nothing about their own culture. So, he says, what we're making is a contribution in our own way, giving them a grasp of where they come from, identifying with their roots and regaining their cultural identity. The app comes in Yoruba, Igbo and Hausa, the country's three main languages apart from English. It costs around 10,000 US dollars, however, and requires users to be equipped with smartphones and tablets which is not a given condition in many Nigerian schools. This means its use has so far been limited to a handful of upmarket suburbs in Lagos. Its creator says he's currently working on releasing more culturally oriented apps to cater for Nigeria's diverse and rich culture.